Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to learn about decision trees, what they are, what they're used for, and how to build them. Now today is part one, the introduction. We're going to talk about decision trees. I'm going to walk you through a decision tree database that I built. And over the next couple of videos, we're going to actually build a decision tree database. So what's a decision tree? Well, it's something like this. I'm sure you've seen tons of these before. They're kind of like flowcharts, although they really don't go backwards upon themselves. They don't go like back up to other stuff. They just, you know, if this, then that, if this, then that, you make a series of decisions and you end up with a resolution, right? Are we going to play ball today? Well, what's the weather look like? If it's sunny, overcast or rain. If it's sunny, is the humidity too high? That's a problem down here in Florida, right? We're going to cancel the game if the humidity is too high, okay? Low humidity, play ball. If it's just overcast, play ball. Is it raining? Well, how windy is it? Real high winds, cancel the game because I can't hit the ball over the fence if it's you know too windy, <laughs> unless the wind's at my back. Uh, low winds, play ball, and so on. Basic, simple decision tree. This is one of my favorite decision trees. Does it move? All right? Yes. Should it move? Yes. No problem. No. Get duct tape. All right? Does it move? No. Should it move? Yeah, get WD-40. No, no problem. Again, simple decision tree. Lots of different things in life can be broken down with a basic decision tree. I actually asked ChatGPT, which can now generate images to put together some simple decision trees. And it's it's not bad. It's just some weird it's still it's still working on the text. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't use these for anything serious, but it gives you an idea of what some decision trees look like. What are some different kinds of uses for decision trees? Well, troubleshooting, PC problems, right? Does the computer start? You know, is it plugged in? Is it in a power strip? Is the power strip on? Those kind of things where you can ask a series of questions to try to drill down to what the problem is. My access issues troubleshooter, for example, right? Go down this list, all right? Have you, have you tried compact and repair? Yes, no. Uh, car problems, right? Does the car start? Is the battery connected? That kind of stuff, right? Is there gas in the car, right? Logical decision makings, legal strategies, where to go for dinner. Do you want Chinese? Okay, you want Chinese? All right, do you want sit down Chinese or take out Chinese? You know, that kind of stuff. Questionnaires and surveys, if you want to get, you know, if it's, if it's multiple choice questions, okay? A knowledge base, you can use them to store knowledge base information. Uh, medical diagnoses. Right? What are your symptoms? Does it hurt when you lift your arm? Well, stop lifting your arm like that. <laughs> Risk assessment for insurance companies. Do you skydive? Do you skydive with a parachute? Without a parachute? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, learning paths. I often thought of building a learning path decision tree for my access courses because I get a lot of people that know some access, so they don't, they're not exactly sure where to start in the course. Even though I tell everybody, yeah, you should start from the beginning. A lot of people don't want to take the beginner lessons because they don't think they need they need that stuff, even though my beginner lessons have a lot of good fundamental stuff in them. But with a learning path, you could ask the student a bunch of questions and based on their answers, figure out where they should jump in. You know, do you know how to build a table? Yes. OK. Do you know how to build a query? Yes. OK. Do you know action queries? Yes. Oh, no. OK. Then you should go here. Do you know relationships? Yes. No. Then you should go here. That kind of stuff. So you can drill down to figure out where in a course they can jump in. And of course, my favorite game development. You guys familiar with the old choose your own adventure books from back in the 80s, right? The endless quest books TSR used to put out where you read a little bit and then it's like, okay, what do you do? Do you attack the goblins or do you run away? That kind of stuff that can be formatted in a decision tree. I'm going to show you some different examples of a few of these things. So here's a basic decision tree database that I built. I built a little prototype before I start recording the videos for you guys, just to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. So we've got three different decision trees that I have in here, right? A PC troubleshooting, a dungeon crawl adventure, and then an access database. Cell. let's take a look at the PC troubleshooting. All right. So the user would double click on it. It opens it up. All right. Welcome to Rick's PC troubleshooting decision tree. Let's start with the basics. Does the PC turn on? Right. Maybe not sure. No. Or yes. Well, let's say no, the PC doesn't turn on. So the user picks this one, double click. It goes to the next node in the decision tree. All right, your PC doesn't turn on. That's not good. Is it plugged in? All right, if they say no, it's not plugged in. Well, there you go, dummy. Plug that sucker in, right? Or you can go back, 
Yes, it is plugged in. Okay, is it plugged into a power strip? No, it's plugged directly into the wall, or yes, it's on a power strip. Yes, it's on a power strip. All right, is the power strip switched on? Believe it or not, I when I used to do PC service and repair back in the 90s, I have had clients that called me and insisted a technician come out because the computer wouldn't turn on. And it turned out to be a power strip under the desk that got flipped off somehow. So believe it or not, this is a valid troubleshooting decision tree. All right, check the power strip. Well, it's not switched on. Well, there you go, dummy. Flip that switch, <laughs> right? Or if, if you know, you go back to, is it plugged in? Uh, is it plugged in directly to the wall? All right. All right, plug something else like a lamp into the wall socket. Does the lamp work? And then you can continue on. I stopped here when I was putting in some sample stuff. But you get the point, right? And eventually you can drill down to what the problem is. Okay. You can do the same thing with an access database help or a dungeon crawl adventure, something like this, right? Welcome to Rick's dungeon crawl. Please select the character class. You want to be a cleric, fighter, thief, or wizard? Well, I'll be a fighter. All right. Greetings, mighty warrior. You take your trusty sword and head into the dungeon. After walking about 20 feet, you can see a group of three goblins sitting at a table. What do you do? Ask to join their game, attack with my sword, quietly try to sneak past them or run away, run away, run away, right? You pick which one you want and then the game continues. Or... You know, whereas, all right, you know, quietly try to sneak past them. If you're a fighter with armor and all that, you're going to be quite noisy. That's going to probably end up badly. But if you pick the thief character, right, and you pick, uh, you know, quietly try to sneak past them, you might have a better chance. You know, this part of the decision tree might work out for you. So you can see how these decision trees are great for both for business and for entertainment, but you can use them for all kinds of different stuff. Now, in addition to the user interface here where they go through and, and select the things we're also going to build an editor for you so you can go through and set up the different options right which which one of these do you want oh, i'm going to be the wizard so you double click on this it opens up the wizard i want to go back up to dungeon call it goes back up to there see all right or if you want to edit the other one the pc troubleshooting one editor right boom there you go does it start yeah it turns on right does windows boot yeah windows boot does not boot that kind of stuff and you can go through and set up all the different nodes in your database. And then the, 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 the viewer, the user can walk through them then. So we'll do two different interfaces. So this is what we're gonna be building over the next couple of videos. Most of it's gonna be free stuff. There will be a couple of little tricks for the members thrown into extended cuts, but most of this is gonna be for the free videos. Now, before we get started, I got a bunch of prerequisites for you. So if you haven't watched any of the following videos, go watch these first so you're not lost when we start building the decision tree. This will be a developer video. A lot of the beginning stuff though, building this interface, we're not gonna need programming until we start getting down to the part where we actually start moving through the different nodes, the different parts of the decision tree. But the setup is gonna be mostly just regular access type stuff. So you definitely wanna be good with relationships, relationships between tables, and more specifically, make sure you understand what a self-join relationship is. All right, self-join. That's where a table relates to itself because these different nodes in the decision tree, right? These guys, these individual nodes, these are all going to be members of the same table. It's going to be a self-join relationship. And in this video, I talk about self-join relationships. We do genealogy tracking because people, right, are all the same thing. It's the same type of unit, right? A person. So a person's mother and a father is just a link to another record in the person table. All right, so genealogy is the perfect example of a self-join relationship. Make sure you understand how to build relational combo boxes. That's where you pick a value from a list from another table. We're going to be working with subforms. Make sure you know how to build continuous forms. Make sure you understand what null values are and how to use the isNull function. You should understand string concatenation. Make sure you know how to requery records. I told you there's going to be a few prerequisites. <laughs> All right, it's going to be a developer level series. So by the third lesson, I'm guessing third, maybe fourth, we're going to need some VBA. So if you don't know VBA, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this before we get to lesson three, I think, two or three. Um, this will teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes to get started. You should know how to open a form to a specific record. Be comfortable writing if-then statements. You should know what variables are. You should know how to use the on double click event to do some stuff. 
And finally, if you have not watched my SQL with Access video, go watch this too. You should understand the basics of a select statement in Access. So these are all free videos. They're all on my website and my YouTube channel. I have links down below you can click on. If you're not sure how to do any of the stuff I just mentioned, go watch those videos first because tomorrow we're gonna start building the decision tree. So come on back tomorrow, check my channel, check my website, there's the link right there. And tomorrow we're gonna start building this thing. We're gonna start off with the tables and then we're gonna get into the user interface and all that good stuff as we go on. Gold members, if you wanna download my prototype database that I built, sometimes I build a prototype database before recording the videos just to you know make sure everything's gonna work the way I want it to work. Well, this will be the download for today's video if you wanna download this and play with it and check it out before we actually get to working on building the thing. And for the rest of you, I'll see you here tomorrow for part two. But that's gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube.
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.